it's Steve Taylor here from Northern Wilderness Bushcraft and uh, our Wilderness Club and Conservation Project. Uh, today I'm not in the woods, I'm at home. Uh, I've got my bag ready to go to the woods for uh, an overnight uh, or two. Um, so I thought I'd show you what I carry in my bag, the kind of bag I'm using. It's not really a review on items, it's just the kind of stuff that I might carry. Um, the date to date is the 6th and 11th, so it's the uh, 6th month and 11th day. Um, the basically I'm going to be going doing it overnight. Uh, the weather's quite on enough at the minute. It's actually been quite rainy and stuff like that. But I'm going to be doing a hammock camp. Um, I'll show you what I've got here, um, and I'll talk about some of the stuff I'm switching out as well because I'm changing some little bits of kit around from my usual setup, um, such as the DD top three by three. I went for the DD extra, um, you know, extra light kind of thing. That super light one's called. Uh, I've changed that. I haven't got here today, but I'll show you exactly what I do and how I've set that up. Right, now I know my head is cut off screen, it's because I want you to be sh looking at this bad boy, nothing else. Now this setup here is a setup without um, my food and stuff in yet. Well, I'll show you the containers and things I carry my food in, uh, and where I carry my food in these areas and stuff like that, and what I've got in the bag, um, and what I can potentially do with it. I haven't got my clothing in here either, because this is, a, this, you know, you change your clothing to the season. Uh, I'll cover clothing in maybe a different video, and um, there's thousands of videos out there all about that. But this is the, uh, the rucksack that I'm using, or backpack. Uh, it's the Sabre 45 by Caramel. Uh, outstanding bit of kit. I absolutely love it. Um, it's, you know, that's Reefa, little dog. Um, outstanding bit of kit. I absolutely love it. So I've got a few things uh, that obviously I always take with me, which is my axe, things like that. Now I don't know if you guys know this, but if you're out and about and you're not using your own transportation, so you're using public service or whatever, make sure that is well buried. Don't ever have your stuff on the outside your bag. Even taking it in your own car down the motorway to go to the local woodland on a roadway you should really have this inside your backpack where it's got no easy reach especially if the deer's issues that we're having um around you know with terrorism and things like that but the, the, the you can actually get a arrested uh for having this well instead of the police officer really if you're dressing tracksuit bottoms and stuff like that and you on your way to the local woods they might pull you and like not believe you but if you had all the bushcraft gear on you in your car and you you know you've got all put away properly they're going to be much more lenient and not arrest or want to search stuff and everything. Anyway, here we are, CM45. Put the side pouches that added on extra. Um, really, really big, good bit of kit. So I'm going to open it up now and show you what we've got inside of here. Um, first of all, I'm going to do these side pouches. Uh, this is all my sleep kit on this side, apart from my hammock. Uh, I do have the regular DD, um, what's it called, frontline hammock. Um, I'll show you that in a moment. So let's have a look. First of all, really like this here. What I love about this bag, see these little clips, I don't even see these. These clips are absolutely awesome, keeps the bag looking really tidy, they just slide up and down. I really like that, so that's pretty cool. Um, so right, let's have a look. So we're basically going to un unclip it. Um, actually, before I unclip it, I'll show you what's in the top part of it, first of all. I might hear someone moving, but it's my partner, she's just doing bits and pieces today. So things I might carry, uh, these are things I'll probably carry and put on my person, once I'm in the woods. Uh, magnifying glass, you've probably seen that before. Really good for identification of mushrooms, plants, getting sparks out your fingers, small neck knife. Um, just comes in handy for all little projects if your main knife's at your camp and you're a couple of metres away or something and you want to cut a bit of power cord or something, neck knife there, ideal. Wind up radio, um, a lot of, you don't have to take a lot of these things but I do, it winds up, it's got a very bright light on the front of that. Uh, access a mini torch, charges your mobile phone as well and if you're a little bit weary at night uh, and you're in the woods by yourself um, this guy can just block out some of that sound that some people if they're not used to it might you know freak out by um, I use it just during the day when I'm working I put a bit of music on and stuff like that as much as I love the silence of the woods it does come handy um, inside the top here as well I have a mesh bag um, just for like laundry bits and stuff like that when I'm doing me bits and pieces and things to air out but I've got more pegs or anything I can just tie this off um, at the top around the line and put stuff inside it works out well also has a mosquito on that um, inside of here I'll show you in a moment this is my candles so inside of here I'll carry my light or my lighting pack torch here um, three four settings on it then inside of here I'll also carry uh, this guy here, I'll carry him with the candles and stuff, spare candle and thing inside of here as well. He's got, um, you can see the glass there, he's pretty much full. Um, the last for a long time, these, the 
the blue ones from Yuko. These are the um, what they call them, the ones to keep with the insects and stuff like that. The I can't remember what to call them now, citronella or something like that. Um, so they're pretty good. I love these. The, the, this some people say there's not enough. It depends on your eyes and how tired you are. There is enough light to be able to see what you're doing by them. If you haven't got tired eyes, if you're tired, then it's it's not great. Like, but they just give such a beautiful glow to camp. Um, they're just really nice. I love them. I absolutely love them. Medical kit. Depends on you what size medical kit you want to do. I'll carry this one. It's got everything in them from bites, burns, snake bites, blooming, absolutely everything inside it. Um, this is the Caramore kit. It's the Explore first aid kit I got from Sports Direct. It cost about, I think, £6 or something. Uh, really good bit of kit. Inside of here, I've got numerous other things. A little bag. This has got bits and pieces inside that I need. Uh, a buff. A couple of quids worth of buff. Uh, and here I've got my um, some tree hugger things I used to put up my top or spare. Bits tree huggers, which I used to put up things with. I've just not tied down them. Um, you have to look at my other video on how I use this and how this loops around a tree and how I use them, kind of thing. Um, inside of here as well, I also have a, a main mosquito net, which goes for use of the hat. So I can use this with a hat and stuff like that for my own places where there's a lot of mozzies, a lot of biters, you know, midges, whatever. I'll use this guy. Um, works fantastic. Lovely bit of kit. Dogs on a mission. You can hear him skidding up on the floors. He's seen a cat, I think. Um, sewing kit. It might cost a quid or something like that. So a little sewing kit comes in really, really handy. So that's why I keep in the top of the actual bag. I'm just going to move that to one side. So you've got an idea what goes in the top of the bag. That's all empty now. I'm not going to go in the main compartment just yet, but just inside the hood here, there's another zip compartment. And inside of here, I'll carry like my medications, uh, anything I need, kind of thing. So it's got some like hand sanitizer, um, hay fever tablets, migraine tablets, just all sorts, some diabetic tablets just in case I crash. Got bits and pieces, got loads of room inside of there to put anything I want, like maps or anything really. Um, you can put absolutely anything you want inside that pouch. Um, right, what I'm going to do, so if you can hear someone shout in the background, it's my partner shout at the dog. Sorry. <laughs> Right, inside of here, this is my um, my kitchen really, um, it's not fully loaded at the moment because I, I, I do add, you can see all the room I've got, it's actually quite a substantial amount of room inside of here, um, but this is what I'll use and I'll add like other food things to it, I'll normally put like my eggs and things inside of here which I'll cover a bit later on, but I carry just a cheap bag, inside of here is my foods, um, basic foods is what I call survival ration food for me, um, I carry a small pouch thing like that, that's the kind of thing that I'll just put like biscuits or anything I want in, you know, tea bags, whatever I want inside there. Um, it's, from my, it's from my Victorian kit, I'll have to show you that sometime. Tea towel, goes inside there as well. Um, bin bags. Then I've got the, the essentials such as washing up liquid. This is a small hand sanitizer bottle um, and I've just emptied it out and put washing up liquid in which uh, my friend John, John, uh, he's fantastic, he's a really good intelligent lad, uh, part member of the club and he just said use one of these but you can actually get smaller bottles than this so I'm going to even go for the next size down which will probably be to where the, the line is on there, that's how small washing up liquid bottle will be so it's ideal for packing away. Cooking oil, this is natural olive oil, some people use coconut oil, whatever oil you want to use. Um, got some protein stuff in here, this is like my emergency little ration bits I take, pork scratching for protein, um, I've got a pepper army in there, you've probably seen this before but I've got my pasta boiling the bag stuff and that is what I carry in that little thing, I might carry some other little bits and pieces which I'll add, you know just other things I want to eat and stuff like that, like bars or anything like that, that one side. then after that I've got my um, me and Barrett's unclip this here, it's unclip really cool. Okay, so this is, let's move this to one side a moment. Okay, cool. So inside of here, just another cheap drawstring bag, let's keep everything separated with. Got my main cooking pots. Um, I'm actually changing all this out at the moment. Now this here, these are the tins, you get two for two pounds. Um, uh, I got these in Tesco's I think, one like nine for two. If you've never seen me use these in my videos, they're really cool. This is a, a pie tin. 
It's exactly what they would have used in like the 1800s, but it would have been made of tin tin. Um, and this one you would have used um, Confederate soldiers, you know, the Civil War, American Civil War. They would have had this as their main frying pan, their cooking plate, everything. I've got two of them slot together really nice. Uh, I can put my food inside, let's say I'm making nachos, can't find nachos with cheese and jalapeno, or I'm making bread or whatever. I just, I've got little clips, I clip this together like that and I can just put that in the fire and that'll cook that through there and it's basically a little oven um, it works fantastic so the, it's what, you know it's light it's not as light as like a life venture plate or something but two quid and it can get bashed about I'm not really bothered if it, if it gets knackered it's, you know I'll, I'll just get another set um, but I fry in this I do everything with my plate everything so I've got two of them there and then after that I'm changing this kit out a little bit because I carry a lot of stainless steel with me and I'm, I'm getting a bit sick of it Bit heavy and John again, my friend, and a lot of the guys from the Bushcraft Club are really into the titanium. And I've never really given titanium a good go, so I thought, you know, I'll get some titanium bits. I've actually changed some stuff out, so I will do an update in this video and show you some of the newer bits I've changed. But inside this bag here, let's pull it out. I'll show you in a second what I've got in here. So that's the bag now empty. This is just like literally what I call my burn bag, a dirty bag. Inside of here, you can see it gets black of all the soot um, from the bits and pieces. <laughs> Dog, he's in there for the food. You smell it. Um, you've seen this loads of times. Again, this you could really lighten this load again. Um, I've probably got an excessive amount of knives. I've got my neck knife. I've got two what I call dirty knives, and this is my clean knife. Uh, my clean knife obviously is for cutting stainless steel. It's what I recommend. Obviously, if you're, you're doing anything to do with sea salt as well down the beaches and stuff like that, you've got to be careful again with locking blades. This does not lock, so I've took the lock off. So therefore, it is not illegal to have this. Although the blade length is again it is questionable but it doesn't lock and I've got a reason to have it it's part of a food kit so I'm pretty good with that um, there's a fork there there's a spoon here it's a corkscrew tin opener on that side um, you can get these from Decathlon they're about 6 99 and um, they're not the, the lightest bit of kit it's got a little belt loop thing on the back as well old school style attachment for your belt not the lightest bit of kit but it works, does me. I, I, I'm okay with that. I could change this to a titanium spork, spork and, and, one, and spoon and one, and then I could maybe just add a stainless steel knife. Um, two items, but I've got one item with everything in, so you know the weight will be less. But you know, so anyway, I've got that inside my pot here. You've probably seen this a thousand times, but here I use the jet boil. I quite like the jet boils. Um, in blacks, well, the one in Metro Centre anyway, they've got these in for four quid. But I've got a converter, although this one is uh, a four season mix. So it's important to have a look at your mixers, what you're getting. This one's about four quid at the moment on offer, normally about eight pounds, so it's half price, so I've got a few of them. So they're really good. Is there a billy can? If you don't know what a billy can is, this is what a billy can is. Billy cans are basically a hanging pot. You can get different versions. I would love to see someone make a titanium version of this. And I know everyone's going, oh, the price of titanium, realistically, no. Nah. And you can get like a cheap Chinese knockoff or something. But it probably is about uh, 20 quid or something. But there's loads of different pots on the market. The reason I like this is that I can hang it up. The new trend at the minute is to take this metal bit off and put wire through to loop it through and everything like that, but I'm not really a fan of that. I quite like having this good sturdy strong bit to work with. So when I open this up, there's one area I can use as a bowl or to prep food and stuff in. Inside of here, I have my Seat Summit 5 litre kitchen sink, which is a fantastic bit of kit. And that actually slots inside my main bowl. See that there? So that works really well. There's another bowl. Inside of here, I have all sorts of bits of goodies. Dish cloth for cleaning. So a lot of people go in the woods and forget about some of the most easiest things, like a dish cloth. Uh, like, uh, just to wipe things down with, ideal. Sponge, do you want to take a whole sponge? Cut it in half. Have one for clean and one for dirty, because these get really hacked up, and if you haven't got fresh one in water, I have one of these for dirty, so I can get all the thick off of it and stuff, and rinse it out as much as I can, and then I get, once I've cleaned the pot out, um, I can give it a rinse, but I've also got a clean sponge to finish it off with, just to make sure I've got a nice, clean thing in there. Inside of here, hot chocolates in the packets. I don't drink tea and coffee, but that's my thing. So that's a Billy Can empty now. Billy Cam, this serves, I believe, you can, I can get two servings of food out of this one pot. If you're watching any of my run, if you watch any of my one pot recipes, you'll see me using that. Uh, a lighter, obviously, for lighting stuff. Um, salt, pepper, vegetable cube, um, meat cube. These little metal tins, they're full of like garlic, salt, seasoning, Cajun spices, and herbs. And I've got a few of them inside of there. These guys at the moment. Got three of those. Then here, I have my clips. 
this is what I clip my little plate together with. So on my two plates, so I clip these together. I'd clip it around, so that's the kind of clip I use to clip these guys together. Of course, I've got my gas adapter now. I've got a smaller one of these. This one's got the electric igniter on. But I've got a smaller titanium one of these I'm changing out for. So it's like half the size. But uh, they're really handy. These pull out and obviously these go on top of the gas bottle screw fixture. Uh, handy little bit of kit. Stainless steel, titanium, uh, Tatanka mug, sorry. Uh, it's got the measurements inside. I use this as a mini micro oven. I'm cooking like one pot pie things or whatever like that. I use this inside the billy can. And I'll be able to put some stones in. Um, and I'll put them inside, put the lid on, and that acts as a, it creates a heat shield around it and uh, cook stuff inside it. So that's what I've got inside of there. I'm going to remove some of this stuff. And of course, all that gets carried inside one sack and inside the bag. There we go, that's my food stuff. So back to the bag again. Okay. I want to go through this side pouch now, that side pouch is now empty, there's nothing inside that. Go on to this one, just going to unclip them. Um, again, I'm changing more things out this side, but this is what I'm using currently. This side of here. Um, first thing I will actually pull out my sleep system, um, which is just get through here. There we go. Right, you've seen probably my rough, rough review on the sleep mat. Got a slate mat there. Um, there is much lighter versions on the market. This one's a 500 gram, 550 gram one, um, but it's, a, it's quite comfortable. I've got some decathlon for 30 pounds. A slate mat, tetan pillow. I'll quickly expand this and show you what it is. This is a down pillow, removable um, outer section, right outer cover, and that bad boy fluffs up really, really well. Um, really comfortable, really nice, ideal for in a hammock, two of these if you're lying on a camp bed or something like that for me anyway, but I've got quite broad shoulders, so I need like a good few to, to keep my head up. So that's that, it comes down to stuff sack, relatively small, light, carry. Um, I've got the grams for that one. After that, let's have a look. I carry a rain poncho, military basic rain poncho. This comes in good if I've got to put this on the floor underneath me, put a kit underneath me, or if I'm making a bed out of wood, I'll put this on top of the wood, you'll see that in other videos. My sleeping bag, which is packed small, it's tiny, you know what I mean? This is a three season, uh, goes down, it says it's rated to minus nine, but I've had this down to like, I think the other day it was about eight Celsius and I felt a bit of chill coming through it, so, but I, I, I was quite hot when I went to bed, it was a hot night, and I obviously cooled down during the night, so I've been sweating quite a bit. So I've got that, and to make it more hygienic, I've got the DD. Uh, silk liner that goes inside it which keeps me nice and warm and of course I've got my 3x3 top inside there with some pegs and things and pieces inside ropes I make attached on it, you'll see how that's been done probably at some point and of course I've got one of these micro uh, absolutely tiny little um, blankets and this is really good, this is if I don't want to use a perp, I haven't got my tarp around it with me, small tarp to, to rest on this is waterproof uh, it's, uh, it works well actually for all sorts of different things. But it's a waterproof one. Falls out. It's quite large. I don't know if you can see that. It's quite big. I make bandanas out of it. I can sit in it too. People can sit in it comfortably. I can use it for getting changed on, getting changed under. All sorts of different things. Um, and it really does go back in that tiny little pack quite easy. Uh, this was about £8, I think, something like that. So I'll do that and I'll put that away later on. And that is all my sleep kit, pretty much apart from my hammock. Which my hammock's just inside of here, inside this part of the compartment. So it's going to move this. So inside of here, I've got my freezer bag. This is what I'll keep like cool items, meats, and things inside of, just a cheap one. There you go, it's got the reflector in. Inside here currently I've got my I've got my egg store. I use a bit of kitchen roll in there. I've got this from Black's 99 pence again. Works okay for me. Flask. 
Uh, this one's quite cool. You've got to be careful with these rubbers. Make sure they work when you get them. Uh, they're, they're about 13 pounds. Uh, you can put your mobile phone inside there to keep it dry if you've got no liquid inside it. If you're on a river raft or anything like that, um, feeling that it's really good for um, drinking stuff from, <laughs> which might be doing for. But if you need to keep documents or something, this inside of here is what I put my meat inside of um, when I'm in the woods and things like that. So that's my pack for that. Um, inside of here, I've got a set of garden gloves, you've seen them loads of time, they work for cooking and all sorts of woodwork and bits and pieces. And then inside of here, I have my toiletry pack. Quick look inside the toiletry pack, see what we've got inside of here. Inside the toiletry pack, toilet roll, inside food bags, uh, ziplock ones, keep them um, dry and not damp. The uh, centre of the toilet roll has been removed. I've just got one, I've got a couple of them. I carry a Listerine inside of here as well for mouthwash. Um, I carry a small deodorant. It's up to you. Some people don't like to use deodorant in the woods. I don't like smelling, especially when I'm teaching and stuff. I like to be, able to be as clean as possible. Um, use that. I've got facial wipes and wet wipes. I keep them clean. Refless. One second, guys. Refless. Thank you, buddy. You can't do that. Sorry about that guys, dog just rubbed Jack some stuff, just tearing it up. Right, more toilet roll. Um, basically take the centre of the card out of the toilet roll, happy days, you've got that there. Um, inside of here I have my little shovel for digging a hole when you go to the toilet. I normally have my toothpaste and lighter in there but at the moment they're out there you place them. So that stuff there can go to one side. Okay. Inside of here as well. This is what I call my, dis my disposables bag. This literally is full of um, waxes, tinder kit, firelight, and stuff. There's all sorts of it. It'll take too much. There's so much power cord in this as well. Um, I literally have bundles of power cord in here. I carry everything in here that's disposable. Beeswax for many different uses. Vaseline for firelight and other uses. Um, lighter. Whistle. I've normally put these in my pocket as well. This is what I carry in my belt. Uh, multi tool. Another lighter. Multi tool applies is always a good thing to have. Again, loads of paracord. So I decide what I want to set up a different shelter. I can make beds, chairs. Again, more paracord. That's pretty much what's inside of this. Just paracord and paracord, more paracord. Probably just OTT on the paracord, to be honest. Uh, inside of here, fingerless gloves that can turn into mittens um, for all sorts of uses. Um, then inside of here, I have cotton wool balls pre prepared. I have two kind of fire kits here. I've got this one given. Uh, it's from Birchwood Bushcraft and Survival Limited. And pretty much it's just full of birch box and cramp balls and things like that. Inside of here, I've got natural fire lighting equipment, fire strikers, steels, char cloth, magnesium, a bit of money, matches dipped in wax, all sorts of different things. I very rarely use any of this actually. It's kind of there's loads of extra crap to carry with us, but uh, you know. When I'm going a long distance, I will take it, and it's good if I'm teaching on the short people. Then inside of here, I have my DD hammock. Then, inside the final back pot, I've got a couple of things here, which goes with my sleep system as well. Small one meter top for floor use or whatever. Caramel fold out seat. I think it's caramel. Yeah, it is caramel. Cost me 99 pence. Bargain. Absolutely love that for sitting on hardwood. Tools I'm using at the moment. I've got, you've seen this in other videos, rosewood scales, um, basically normal knives, not Scandi, standard. Fire strike inside of there as well, rosewood with a sheath and stuff like that. Lap blender, saw, tools. Uh, other tool I've got inside of here as well, uh, a couple of things. Knife sharpener, that's why I'm using this kind of knife. I'm using the, um, I've got the name of it now. This one is a trade knife, snub nose trade knife. You can see the, don't see the grind on that. It's not there. It is. It's not Scandi, 
Uh, I've got, totally forgot the name of it now. You probably remember in the comments. But yeah, anyway, I've got two of them. Quick shop. And you can mess around with Scandies and stuff like that. But I, if I'm busy and I'm working, I don't want to be sitting there and getting them working away. I just want to get it off and run through quickly. Get get a good sharp edge on the carry on working. Um, so, <laughs> quick, easy, fast solution. Um, it is nice to sharpen your knives in the woods if you've got the time. But no, nope, not all the time. Right, and that is the pack now pretty much empty, apart from the axe on the front here. At the moment, I'm carrying. Uh, the Hull of Fours, um, you've seen this in one of the videos, it's a Hull of Fours axe pretty much, uh, from all of the sheep on there. And that is the pack done. So the only other things I would add to that pack would be my clothing. Um, so um, obviously my food and water, uh, but I've got the whole internal side. I've got like pretty much 45 litres uh, inside the middle section uh, of the pack. Now inside the middle section I'm carrying my toilet bag, my disposables bag if you like uh, or bag where I carry my ropes and things in and then my uh, on this trip I'm taking the hammock so I've got a hammock inside there I'm not bothered taking an under blanket or anything with me because uh, the season doesn't ask for it but if I did I would normally have a under blanket in there but pretty much that leaves my rest of my bag free for all my food goes in there as well inside the freezer bag but that pretty much leaves it rest free for more food water generally I carry my water separately I don't want to put it in the same pack um, I'll carry five litres um, but I drink a lot of water so it depends on how much water you use but I drink I use five litres five litres sees one person me for two for roughly yeah roughly two days and that is using it sparsely such as cleaning boiling using it to mix food for stuff like that and i kind of get through and drinking it obviously i kind of get through five liters in roughly two days but generally i'll prefer five liters per day in the woods uh, at home i'll drink about two and a half liters a day anyway so i do drink quite a bit of water um so yeah man that's the pack that is my kit that's what i'm taking obviously clothing wise i would take um whatever the season or weather is asking for um and just dress accordingly um and dress so you know you're going to be safe you know you're coming in to an area where you're going to be hiking in it's going to be peeing down uh, you're going to be soaking make sure you've got clothes to change into make sure the clothes that you're drying is quick drying stuff you know uh, make sure that you're not wearing loads of cotton wool I'll always go back to wool wool's my favourite thing they've been used forever pretty much is, is the go-to material keeps you warm when it's wet anyway that's that for my bag um, so yeah I'm going to get the rest repacked away again and um, get sorted and then uh, yeah I'm going to go camping and I'll see you in the woods till next time guys leave no trace but knowledge thanks for watching Thank mm -hmm. you.